Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a rainbow spider shirt. I've started with a 100% cotton shirt that I've soaked in a soda ash solution for 20 to 30 minutes. I've wrung it out and so it's just barely damp. I've also turned the shirt inside out. To have a shirt where the front looks more symmetrical and the back looks more symmetrical, I'm going to center the shirt. Centering a shirt means I'm going to get the center of the front of the shirt right up next to the center of the back of the shirt. So to do that, I'm going to start by tucking one sleeve inside of the other one and lining up the seams of the sleeves. I'm also going to line up the shoulder seams. This particular shirt has side seams, which is actually kind of unusual for a t-shirt. Most of the t-shirts I work with do not have the side seams. So in this instance, I'm going to line the side seams up as well. If your shirt doesn't have side seams, down below this video in the description is a link to another video which shows how to center a shirt. The shirt that I'm using in that video does not have side seams. The process is pretty similar, but I do have to mark the center of the shirt since I don't have the seams that I can use for reference. Also, if you're uncomfortable with the process of centering a shirt, you can just go ahead and simply fold the shirt in half. I'm gonna smooth as many of the wrinkles out of the shirt as I can. So right now the side seams of the shirt are at the top, and both of the centers of the shirt are at the bottom facing me. Okay, so now the shirt is centered and the center of the front of the shirt is now sitting on the center of the back of the shirt. I'm going to find an area on the shirt where I'd like the center of the spider to be, pinch it with my fingers, and begin twisting. If I twist up toward the top of the shirt, it's going to look like the spider is crawling up the shirt. And if I twist down toward the bottom of the shirt, it's going to look like the spider is crawling down toward the bottom or the hem of the shirt. In this case, I'm going to make the spider crawl up the shirt. So I'm going to twist up toward the top or the neck of the shirt. As I'm spiraling the shirt, I'm using my other hand and I'm forming additional folds in the shirt. If you're familiar with how to tie or to fold a spiral, this is pretty much the same process, except that the shirt is folded in half.
To hold these folds in place, I'm going to use some rubber bands. I'm using the rubber bands to also make the sections where I'm going to apply the dye. So I'm going to use three rubber bands on this shirt and make the shirt into six sections. I'm going to adjust the rubber bands until I have them the way that I want them, and I'd like for each one of the rubber bands to intersect close to the center of the spiral. Since I just tied the shirt, the shirt is still damp when I begin applying the dye. I've placed the shirt on top of a metal rack that I have over the top of a plastic container. This will allow any of the excess dye to flow through the shirt into the bottom of the container. I'm going to dye this spider a rainbow, but I'm only going to use the three primary colors of tie-dye. So I've mixed up lemon yellow, fuchsia, and turquoise from Dharma Trading Company. I've also mixed up Raven Black to use on the back of the shirt. I'm gonna start by applying fuchsia to two of the sections. I'm using Procyon Fiber Reactive Dye. It comes in a powder form, and it's sold by several different suppliers here in the United States. I've purchased this particular dye from Dharma Trading Company. There's a link down below in the description for where I purchased the dye. I've also placed links for a couple of different tie-dye kits. If you're a beginner and you're wanting to purchase a kit, some of the professional tie-dye suppliers have kits available for purchase that are the same kind of dye that I'm using and will give you really good results if you follow the instructions. There are a lot of different kinds of dyes available and so if you're using a different kind of dye, you're going to need to read and follow the instructions for your particular kind of dye. Don't forget when you're applying dye to the shirt to make sure and apply dye to the outside edges of the shirt. Next, I'm gonna apply lemon yellow to two sections. If you'll notice, the fuchsia has spread out beyond the sections where I applied it, and that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna add the lemon yellow right over the top of that area, and it's gonna form the orange in the shirt. I'm applying quite a bit of dye to each one of these sections because I wanna get good color saturation. In general, I don't particularly like a lot of white on a tie-dyed shirt. 
Some designs I purposely leave white in the design and in the shirt because of the way it looks with that design. But for this shirt, I want most of the shirt to have color on it. So I want to really make sure I get plenty of dye in each one of these sections. In this last section, I'm going to apply turquoise. And here again, I'm going to go right over the top of the yellow that's bled into this area to form the green on the shirt. And then I'm going to go over the fuchsia that's bled into this area to form the purple on the shirt. I'm going to gently lift the shirt and check the back to see whether or not the colors are coming through to the back side. That will help me determine whether or not I'm getting good color saturation in the middle of the shirt. When I turn the shirt over, you can see that all three of the colors are starting to come through to the back side. Now I'm going to apply Raven Black to the entire back side of the shirt. I'm not going to add it to the little fringe areas though that are kind of sticking out. And when I apply black to the center of the spiral, I'm going to apply very little. I'm also not going to over apply the black to the rest of the shirt. I want to make sure the black doesn't go through to the front side and overtake all the colors. These little fringe pieces of shirt, I'm going to touch those up before I turn the shirt back over and allow it to process with the colored side up. With the kind of dye that I use, it's important that the shirt be in a warm space. So I'm going to cover this container and I'm going to allow the shirt to sit in a room that's at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours or longer. To rinse the shirt, I took the shirt to my utility sink and began rinsing in cold water. I rinse in cold water to rinse out all of the soda ash that's left in the shirt. Then I gradually warm the water up to hot and continue rinsing to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. All the dye that's going to bond with the shirt has already bonded. The part that's rinsing out is just leftover dye. After I untied the shirt, I rinsed it for a little while longer, and then I decided to soak the shirt. I added hot water to my sink and a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent. I soaked the shirt until the water cooled off. Then I changed the water out and repeated the process of soaking until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirt into my washing machine along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent and washed the shirt in a hot water cycle. After the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. So what do you think about how it turned out? You see how the spider's crawling up the shirt? And how where all of the primary colors overlapped with each other, it made the secondary colors of green, purple, and orange. We also got really good color saturation because I don't see a whole lot of white left in the shirt. So if you've enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.